Okay, let's take a look at a skill that's very necessary to do well in the AP exam, and that's to look factor equations by looking for the greatest common factor. And the key here is the greatest factor. So for example, in this first problem here, I'm going to try to factor this equation, or sometimes I call it undistributing, because I'm going to start to use the distributed property backwards. Instead of taking a number out front and distributing to the parentheses, I'm going to actually add parentheses and figure out what number goes out front. I'll show you what that means in this problem here. So in this problem here, I'm looking for what can I divide both of these terms by. If I look here, I can divide both 16 and 24 by 8. Again, I'm looking for the greatest common factor. I could divide both by 4 and 2, but 8 is the biggest number that divides in both of them. From a variable standpoint, I can divide both of these by x. So the, this becomes my common factor. And then i got to decide what stays in the parentheses. So I'm going to divide both these terms by 8x and see what's left. So 16x squared divided by 8x is 2x. 24x divided by 2, uh, 8x, sorry, is 3. So this equation now is simplified by finding the greatest common factor. So let's take a look at another problem here. 4x cubed plus 12x. Again, the greatest common factor here would be 4x. That's what I can divide both those terms by. And then I see what's left inside. So I have x squared because 4x cubed divided by 4x is x squared plus 3 because 12x divided by 4x is 3. Now the problems get a little more complicated because now we have multiple variables in here. If you notice you have a number x and y and you're looking for the common factor with each of those different um, pieces. So for the first one I always start with the numbers. 18 and 12 the biggest number that divides into both of those is 6. x squared and x the biggest I can divide into both of those is x squared y to the fourth and y squared. The biggest I can divide in there is y squared. And then my job is to figure out what's left inside the parentheses. So I take the first term, I divide it by 6x squared y squared. If I notice there, I just get 3y squared. And when I do the same thing with the second term, 12x cubed y squared divided by 6x squared y squared, all I'm left with is 2x. And so this is considered a simplified equation to the first one. So let's take a look at some examples a little bit more complicated. Okay, so again, I'm looking for what's common to both of these terms. Um, by the way, the terms is always separated by the addition problem or subtraction problem sign. So in this case, what I see in both terms is the number 3, x squared and x, or I can divide both of them by x, y cubed and y squared, I can divide both of them by y squared. So there's my common factor, and then I've got to see what's left inside the parentheses. So I'm going to divide both those terms by my common factor, 3xy squared. Well, when I do that with the first term, all I'm left with is y. And when I do that with the second term, I'm left with 3x. Again, I've simplified this equation by finding the greatest common factor. Okay, this is one that shows up a lot, especially when you do the product rule, is you have a, a, a term here. And again, this addition sign here separates the terms. And your job is to look for what's common to both terms. But if you notice here, you have two numbers here. 4 times 6 for the first term, and 3 times 8, which happens to both equal to 24. So once you realize that, you realize, well, 24 is a common factor. Then i got to look at, at the x plus 4 to the 5th and x plus 4 to the 4th and realize I can divide both of those by x plus 4 to the 4th power. And because this common factor had parentheses, I have a tendency to use brackets for what's left inside, just to help me keep track of the parentheses versus what's left inside. So I'm going to divide both the terms by 24x plus 4 to the 4th. Well, what's left on the first term is just x plus 4 to the first, but just x plus 4. For the second one, it's actually everything. That's exactly what I pulled out, that if I divide the second term by 24x plus 4 to the 4th, everything disappears, so I have plus 1. So this could be simplified to x plus 5, what's inside the brackets. Okay, so let's take a look at the next problem here. And again, I'm looking for a common factor separated by the subtraction sign in both terms. 18 and 8. Okay, so the biggest number I can divide out of both of those is actually 2. y minus 5 cubed, y minus 5 squared. I can take out y minus 5 squared from both terms y plus 2 to the 5th, y plus 2 to the 6th, I can take out y plus 2 to the 5th power. And again, I use brackets here 
because of the fact that the parentheses helps me keep straight keep things straight. So I'm going to divide both terms by this common factor. 18 divided by 2 is 9. y minus 5 cubed divided by y minus 5 squared is y minus 5. And y plus 5, I'm sorry, y plus 2 to the fifth divided by the y plus 2 to the fifth is equal to 1. So now I've got to do the second term now. Negative 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. y minus 5 squared divided by y minus 5 squared is called cancels. y plus 2 to the sixth divided by y plus 2 to the fifth is y plus 2 to the first. I didn't make my brackets long enough. I'm going to erase this. Let's correct this, make this look nice. And so this is my simplified equation. I could do a little bit more here and actually distribute here in both cases and then combine like terms, but for purposes of learning this skill, this is good enough. Okay, so let's um, use the product rule to find the derivative of equations that starts out as a product. So remember, if your equation is u times v, then your derivative is u prime v plus u v prime. Okay? So I'm going to use this rule in each of these problems. So we're going to find g prime of x. So I've got to find, here's my u, there's my v. So I'm going to derive the first using the power rule. So 12x cubed. Leave the second one alone. Then I'm going to leave the first one alone, plus 3x to the fourth, times the derivative of the second, which is cosine 5x times 5. And then what I would like you to do is see if you can actually factor this equation by looking for the common factor. In this case, the common factor is 3x cubed. And that's actually the only thing that's common to both of them. So then I'm left for the first term with 4 sine 5x plus 5 cosine 5x. And so these would be factors. So this is where I'm using the skill that I was teaching you um, on the previous slides. Okay, so let's try this one. h prime of x. So I'm going to derive the first, which i got to use the power rule on the outside. So 3 times 3x plus 1 squared times the derivative of the inside times 3. Then I'm going to leave the second one all, 7x minus 5 squared, plus, go out of room here, 3x plus 1 cubed times the derivative of the second one. So I'm going to use the power rule on the outside, leave the inside alone, put the first power there just to remind myself, and then derive the inside. So you can see this is a very similar problem to the previous slide. So I'd like you to see if you can try to find the common factor to both these terms and see if you can factor this. For the last one here, y prime of t, this looks like a product rule problem, but notice here that there's actually only one variable. So in reality, this is actually just a fairly complicated chain rule problem. Product rule always will have multiple variables, two x's or two t's or whatever variable you're dealing with. When there's only one variable, it's just a chain rule. So I'm going to derive, I'm going to ignore the 5 for right now. I'm going to derive the cosine first, and I'm going to get negative sine, leave the in alone, 6t squared, times the derivative of that inside, which is 12t to the first. And then I'm going to remember to multiply it by 5, that number that was out front. So I'm going to make this negative 5 sine 6t squared times, let's be a time sign, 12t to the first. So don't be fooled that um, problems that start to look like a product rule are sometimes mistaken and realize this is still just a chain rule problem.